So you're saying the the experience I was witnessing where the chiropractor was adjusting someone that could have been legit in terms of the therapy, meaning if someone was sitting on a terrible chair all week, every week, they come in Friday for their headache adjustment, the headache goes away for the weekend, then they're back next week for the headache. You're saying, yeah, legitly, that could have been a, a structural postural thing that, that he was addressing. But then at the end of the day, Maybe it was the the diet peaks, like I mentioned, even just simply getting a lot of these patients off gluten, they noticed that they only had to come in every two weeks or every three weeks. So is it, w- would you then say that the, the food allergens were contributing to increased inflammation, maybe triggering these nerves to be more sensitive? Or what do you think the diet, how would that link into the structural component? Yeah. So the diet does two things, right? The diet, one, increases an environment of inflammation, the more inflamed um, you get the, 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 the least amount of blood flow, less blood flow, you get to the muscles, less blood flow, you get to the nerves. So there's going to be less, uh, communication, right? It's like, it's like you're on a microphone and you start to get near static, right? And you start getting static. It's kind of like that. So if we have a lot of inflammation, what starts to happen is the muscles start becoming more, less pliable, more like beef jerky versus soft and supple. And then that affects the nerves as well, because the more inflammation there is, that's going to affect nerve communication. And then, of course, the more inflammation there is, and if we have bad posture and we don't move, then the joints can become a little bit stuck and maybe uh, out of aligned or subluxated. So it could aid to the inflammation, which then makes it harder for the muscles to work, thus harder for the joints to work and the nerves to work. That's number one. And then number two, things like gluten have shown to actually decrease blood flow to the brain, to the frontal cortex. So you have blood flow up the garden hoses on the side of your neck called the carotid artery. And there's studies on this talking about gluten decreasing blood flow and and creating inflammation in the brain. So one, it's going to do it via structural mechanisms of the nerves and muscles and joints from an inflammation standpoint. Structural two, it's going to affect blood flow and drive up inflammation to the brain, which then can create more neurological activation, immune activation in the brain, which can create symptoms of head pain there too. So if you want to be smarter and make better decisions, make sure you're not eating gluten. That sounds pretty convincing to me. Also, let's get into the nutrient deficiency piece. If you're eating a meal, let's say you're eating a pasta and chicken, you're probably not going to be getting much magnesium. And you're probably not going to be getting many B vitamins that are going to be essential. Magnesium is probably the most famous mineral for headaches and muscle cramps and things like that. And we could pull it up, but it's very easy to find in the literature, the link between magnesium deficiency and headaches. And of course the muscle cramping too. So, I mean, that's an easy one too, from the diet perspective, it's not just the inflammation piece. It's the absence of the nutrition that you need to help you know, fuel these, these pathways. And then also what about like fatty acids? So, you know, I remember several people where all we did is give them a high dose omega three couple grams a day and their headaches were gone just based on adding in some omegas. Yeah. So there's a couple other components with headaches, right? So of course, like you, you're just highlighting nutrients, like your brain needs certain nutrients to run and function. So if you look at a lot of these migraine, these natural migraine supplements, you'll see a couple of common things. You'll see like, B vitamins, especially like niacin in there. You'll see things like magnesium in there. You'll see B6 in there. These are really important things. Also, CoQ10 is very important for headaches and migraines. So just from a nutrient standpoint, the more nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory, low-toxin your foods are, the more these nutrients are going to be present, okay? And the other component is the more refined and processed your foods are, usually there's going to be, okay, and then also the fat start. The fats are also anti-inflammatory. So remember, inflammation affects the muscles, the nerves, the joints, and the more of an anti-inflammatory environment you create with good fats, like you just highlighted, that's going to help. And the other component is blood sugar. So the the more poor your diet is, usually there's more processed food, you're lacking those nutrients, but you're also typically eating more processed, refined carbohydrates and junky fats, which causes your blood sugar to go up and down. And these ebbs and flows of blood sugar especially on the way down, can really create headache issues. So this reactive hypoglycemia kind of blood sugar issue response can create surges of adrenaline and cortisol. And those things can definitely create headaches too. 